and once again a warm welcome to Ifi. this time on the part of the Press Information Bureau of the Government of India. I am Irmelinda Dias and I have this very pleasant task of facilitating this interaction between a galaxy of uh, stars here and the press which is drawn just, the, just not just from Goa but also from India and abroad. Now to begin the round of introductions, we, uh, we are actually dealing with three films, but the director of one of the films, Mr. Matthew Brown, is not here. He's expected, and uh, as he comes, we will take him in. I have here with me Rodrigo Barriosa. He is the director of the film called A Translator, which is one of the selected entries in the competitive, in the competitive section of IFI. His film has already won the Golden, Gobler, the Golden Goblet Award at the Shanghai International Film Festival this year. And it was also world premiered. It was also world premiered at the Sundance Film Festival this year. He's again vying for the Golden Globe at IFI this year. So best of luck for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So welcome to you. And we are actually very, very proud, extremely honored to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. So we welcome Matthew Brown. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. So he just joined us, Mr. Matthew Brown. He's, he's here with his film, which is called Maine. And that is being screened at the World Panorama here. Mr. Brown, uh, he's a graduate of the University of North Carolina School of Arts. He has a whole lot of films to his credit, but his micro budget debut film called the In the Treetops. He's, uh, it has had its world premiere at the Los Angeles Film Festival in 2015. Welcome to you, Mr. Brown. We are very proud and honored to have you here. Thank you, happy to be here. And then we go, my next, my next person is the director, honored director, Shivam, Lenin Shivam. It's my pleasure to introduce you. Yeah, my voice is not edible. Okay, but I can't turn the mic either. Okay. Uh, so it's great pleasure to introduce Lenin Shivam. He's here once again with his film. It's called Ruba. It's a bilingual film, and it is once again part of the World Panorama Cinema at Ifi here. Shivam is a Canadian filmmaker, but he has his roots deeper uh, here, closer to India. His roots lie in neighboring Sri Lanka. His pre uh, he has a whole lot of uh, short films, and one of his short films won the Best Short Film Award of the Year in 2006. Uh, that short film was named A Few Good People. Am I right? Uh, you know, he was concentrating most of the time on, f on short films, but he changed tracks from short films to feature films, and his debut feature, 1999, in 2009, gave him international recognition. He won, I think, several awards for that film. And I would also like to welcome Amrita, Amrita Sandhu. He's the main cast in this film, Ruba, and he plays the role of a transgender woman. Welcome to you. Welcome to you. Thank you so that. much. Yeah, yeah. And now that the rounds of introductions are over, I, before I actually open the floor to the journalists, I would just like to ask myself, I myself would like to ask them a few questions. To you, Sir Rodrigo Barriosa, your film, The Eight Translator, is supposed to be based on the true story of your father. Mm -hmm. The film is about a Russian literature professor at the University of Havana, who's torn away from the abstract world of academics to the real world of pain and tragedy as he handles his entrusted job as a translator between Cuban doctors and the child patients after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in 1986. Mm -hmm. I, it's, a, it's a very tense film, a dense film, and I would like you to tell our audience what were the motivations to make this film as it unfolds itself amidst the collapse of USSR with immense social, political, cultural impacts on individuals, families, and nations. Mm -hmm. Can you please share? 
You don't know what that's. Um, the film, um, as you were mentioning, it's it's a very personal story. I it's not only based on a story within my family, but I also co-directed it with my brother. Um, so it was very close to home. We never set up to make a political film, even though there is a giant political background that kind of kind of underpins uh, the whole story. But there are many guiding uh, factors in the film. And one of those, when we started thinking about um, the film, it was at the height of the European refugee crisis. And one of the things that my brother and I were always thinking about uh, was the fact that this tiny island of Cuba, um, with all the deficits that it has, managed to offer medical treatment to 25,000 people. And we still find the, that number and that uh, humanitarian mission to be incredibly inspiring in terms of the social uh, responsibility that we have, not only as a country, but as part of an international community. And you know, there is always room to do more. But we never set up to tell the story of our dad. It, it happens to be the story of our dad, but we thought that it, there were um, elements in the story that, of course, were very rooted to the Cuban reality, but also spoke about uh, a lot of international elements. And is that drive to you know, revamp yourself and find a way to carry on when your life is flip on its head by elements that are completely outside. Um, your control. And now can I talk to Mr. Matthew Brown about your film? You know, your, your film main, it's supposed to be dealing with complex emotions, internal processes like introspection and self-discovery. Please tell the audience, what was your motivations? What was your objectives? What were your feelings? What were your experiences while you were doing this film? Well, um, I, it mostly came from what and the fil kind of films that I liked. And a lot of the filmmakers that I respect and that I uh, spent a lot of time watching surrounding the film and in my own personal time, they told stories that were deeply personal and sort of happening from the inside out. And a lot of what happens on the screen is as much with what is said and what is unsaid and... and um, as far as the inspiration for the place and story, I always wanted to do the Appalachian Trail. And I had a really pretty serious back injury when I was 16, so I can't, it's something I can't really do anymore. I could never through hike that trail. So I guess I wanted to live vicariously through the characters and their experiences. And that's sort so of where it all it, is came it based from. based on your personal experience? Yeah, I was happened. I was in love with a girl and it didn't work out. So <laughs> yeah. uh, that was personal. Yes. So I, I think it's a film about the process of getting freedom itself. Well, I I'm a pretty broken down person, and whenever I and I tend to be attracted to other broken down people, and I, I guess the movie is just about how. Um, you connect when you're... With people who are in the same... Place. Yeah, that are in the same situation. And now can I come to director Shivam Lennon, Lenin Shivam. Uh, as I said, you know, you have had a, a whole lot of short films before you finally hit the jackpot with the feature films in 1999. Uh, can you talk to us about uh, this process of graduation from short films to feature films? Uh, what's it like? Is it gradual or it just happens? I think it's, um, it's gradual because yeah. filmmaking is a really difficult task. And, uh, you know, I wasn't a full-time filmmaker. It was part-time, so my way of uh, expressing um, the ideas and thoughts started off with the uh, shorter films are easier. And then uh, when I felt that I'm ready for the feature film, that's when I started doing 1999. And uh, 1999 brought you a whole lot of awards? Yeah, it, it, it went to Vancouver International Film Festival, and then from there it went to uh, many festivals and won awards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about this current film, you know, Ruba, Ruba, mm -hmm. it, it's supposed to be dealing with a young South Asian trans woman mm -hmm. 
who's actually struggling to handle the social and economic problems that come with the status of transgender. And, but this film still has some strong positivities, like you know the process of self-healing and the second chances that the universe gives you when you come to terms in reality with your uh, in terms with the, your own reality. Uh, this is a film we should talk about to our audience. Yeah, what is like? What is your? What are your experiences? What is the motivation? What is the? Yeah, the motivation was um, I read a story called Ruba, short story. It's written by Shobha Shakti. He's a very well-known uh, Tamil uh, author. He's incidentally he's the star of the film Anthony Das and Jesu Dasan. And uh, when I read the story, I was like. Uh, really moved. Uh, there are two things that uh, actually, um, you know, pulled me towards this story. One is uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful love story, one that I can relate to. And the other one is um, I felt that, um, you know, this uh, not just the transgender uh, issues that we have within the South Asian community, um, the, uh, the LGBTQ plus, the whole issue, it's, it's still considered to be a taboo, especially uh, the Sri Lankan, uh, uh, Sri Lankan who are living abroad in Canada. Uh, so I, I thought um, this, this needs to be told, and this movie could genuinely spin a dialogue within the community, and that's how it started. Uh, can I talk to Amrita Sandhu now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you have played a really wonderful role. You know, what attracted you to the role? That, how, how exactly you select roles? How do you say yes to roles? Thank you very much. I feel when I was reading through Ruba, um, what really inspired me about playing Ruba was the fact that she really is no different than any one of us. You know what I mean? She, I always say that she is someone that you would sit at the cafeteria with. She is someone that you might sit on the train next to. You know what I mean? She's very much amongst us. And what, what really lured me into playing her was you, you, you see what can happen to an individual, a young woman, if there is not enough love in your life. If you're ostracized, if you're not supported by your friends, by your community, by your family, you see what happens to a young woman who, who doesn't have those qualities in, in, in your life. And that is what really sort of shook me and, and, and helped me understand, wow, this is what happens when, when those missing elements are, are gone from your life. So, so that really pulled me into it. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I, I've forgotten to mention that we have it in the audience here the producer of Ruba, Warren Chinatambi. We also have the executive director, Ms. Raji Nair, and the director of photography, Arsene Yves Gusev. Please, we are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are also our honored guests. We are welcoming you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I would like to open the floor to questions by our media friends. Yes. Cuba struggle with a number of issues that uh, I don't think is the right setting for me to discuss. Uh, freedom of media arguably is one of them, but again, I would prefer if we uh, keep the questions pertaining my film and not the reality of Cuba. I do not live in Cuba. I've lived outside of Cuba for 12 years. Um, thank you. In the film, did you really want to discuss the, the social, economic, cultural impacts that the, that the breakup of the U erstwhile USSR mm -hmm. had on its member, like on Cuba, on other, uh, on other countries? Uh, yeah, 100%. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, Cuban history and economics and politics, uh, Cuba and the USSR were very close allies, and Cuba was very much financially supported by the USSR. When the Berlin Wall fell, and that triggered the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, Cuba lost a lot of the financial aid that was essential for the country to run the way it was running at the time. So that triggered something that is known in Cuban history as the special period, um, which is 
very much the deepest economic crisis that Cuba has seen. So in the film, that is the film is not about that, but that is present um, throughout the second half of the film, and it was very important for us to talk about it because um, it very much affects the reality of the lead character, Malin. You know, not only is this man pulled away from his family and his job, but suddenly he's also unable to provide for his family because the means of um, you know, providing for them were completely altered by the fact that the Soviet Union had collapsed. So we pay special attention to um, how that affects them, how that affected most Cubans. But yes, it was a very uh, precise intention to portray that in a way that didn't kind of overshadow what the film was about, but also be truthful to the reality of the time period. Uh, you are vying for the either the Golden Globe or the Silver Globe at our IFI. What chances do you stand of getting it? Like oh on, God, on what none. Yeah. Uh, none. There, are, I believe, were 15 films, and I haven't had the pleasure of seeing them. But um, I never go to a festival thinking about an award. Uh, being here, and I know it's a cliche, and everyone says it, but really, it's a it's an award to just be here with you. Or oh, we made a film. I think it's a being a filmmaker is a very beautiful thing, and I think there is a, s a lot of self endorsement in it. The fact that we make these stories and now we make it our life mission to share it and show it to you all. So the fact that you're here to indulge that need, um, it's quite appreciated by, I'm sure, all of us here. So that's the award the fact that we actually do have a platform to share the story with you all. Mr. Rodrigo, even though you are not come here with the intention of gaining the award, we wish you all the best. Thank you. I'll be May very happy if I win it. the silver globe be yours. <laughs> from Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Mr. And Rodrigo. Yes. I just want to tell you a little story. Four okay. years ago, I brought a Cuban film, which was a New York student. Uh -huh. She never thought she would get anything, and she left. Ah. Went back. And then she won the jury award. Okay. Well, so, I'm living on Sunday, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. So what happened is they asked her to come back. She couldn't get in. Because oh. uh -huh. uh, India at the time had rules that you can only come back every two months. Oh, wow. So you never know these things happen. So unfor this unfortunately, I cannot stay till the end because I have um, another festival in Switzerland. Good. So I have to run. But my brother arrives on the day that I leave, and he will attend so the closing ceremony. No nominate. She nominated me, and they won't let me do the present. <laughs> The FE didn't let me but, do it. But so his brother is the co-director, yeah, so, so good. he can. So yeah, he can yeah. probably take yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, yes, so yes. don't underestimate the surprises. Thank you. Yeah. Two, I have pro uh, like brought your film here, and I'm very sure you may be able to win. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. As they say, from your lip to God's ears. <laughs> Are you still living in Cuba? No, I live in Canada. I live in, we actually live in Toronto. Yeah, uh, I live in Toronto, too. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I saw your film, that's why I... Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. See, I always have that reaction. I always say, oh my God, people see it. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Ro Rodrigo, my yeah. question to you is, when I think of Cuba, I think of good health, longevity, and good medical health care, yeah. which are the best uh, in the world. Yeah, and you. recently I came to know that uh, pesticides are uh, banned in Cuba. So no farmer gets a pesticide to... I mean, cultivate. That is one more reason for longevity in Cuba. Mm -hmm. One more social change you want and you feel should happen now in Cuba, what should it be? It's my good fortune as a Cuban to get all the political questions. Um, <laughs> I, to, I wish it for Cubans and I wish it for everyone. I, I wish freedom of all kinds and I hope that um, Things will slowly, Cuba will open up to the world. It's a process that we have been seeing uh, in the past few years. Our American friend and I, it's, it's so beautiful. I'm sitting next to an American. Um, as you know, Obama and Castro uh, reinitiated diplomatic uh, relationships, and I think it's opening up to the world, and uh, more people are going to Cuba and seeing that it's very different from the idea that a lot of people have in their heads. And as an artist, I just always wish that we get the freedom of expression that we need to say what we need to say. 
Any other questions from the press friends? Uh, well, I've only made, the first movie I made, I made with pretty much no money, so there's always that method. And then, uh, the second movie, it was really easy for me, actually. The one that's here, Maine. So, those are kind of my two experiences. I wrote the script, and then I, a month later, we were, they kind of signed the check, and we were doing it. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be that easy like that, yeah. uh, <laughs> next time around. What's the what's the budget like for the in the tree in the treetop? In the treetops? Yeah. Uh, I mean nothing. It, under I can tell you it was under ten thousand. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in my case, um, you know, it's a it's a it's a film about transgender woman and. Uh, um, South Asian community in uh, Toronto, uh, which was very difficult. Um, for, for about a year, once we finished the script, I was looking for uh, pitching it, uh, passing the script, and nothing turned out until I met uh, wonderful people here, Raji and Warren, from uh, Next Productions. Uh, they, they, t they took in the script, they looked at it, and then they felt the same way as I did when I read the short story. and. From there onward, everything was easy. Nice. Would the producer uh, of Ruba, Warren Chinathambi, or the executive producer, or the director of photography, would you like to say anything to the audience, your experiences while making this film, especially the DOP? Yeah. No, I need a, I need a question. <laughs> I don't know. Like what's a, you see uh, the 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 quality of a film depends not just on the story it also depends on the process of filmmaking technology cinematography and all that so as a you are director of photography yes. yeah so like what uh, like tell us something about the technology that was used the effects I think uh, the technology we use was the the most classical film technology we always use in Germany. So it wasn't Ari Alexa, it was Master Prime Lenses. It was like the easiest thing to work with. And it was very, very important to have the easiest setup ever because I knew the challenge <laughs> and the script was was huge. So I, I wanted not to worry about the camera and just only worry about the story. And um, based on that, we started playing around, and we, we we started thinking about framing the movie differently and, and using different lenses for different storylines and different styles for different storylines. So um, from a small package, uh, it got bigger and bigger every, <laughs> every time we discussed scenes, yes. So basically, I used everything my rental house had. <laughs> at the end, <laughs> and they were they were very happy to give it to us. So the product was good, the output was as expected. Yeah, it was it, it was an awesome experience. I mean, uh, you can imagine. I, I'm I'm born in Russia. I was working with Tamil people, living in Toronto. <laughs> I brought my uh, German art director to this project. So it it was a nuclear fusion of cultures, <laughs> and you can imagine how it was on set then. Yeah. Ms. Nair, would you like to supplement something, add something to it? Um, the challenges. Um, during, actually, our challenges began even before the film went to on the floor. Um, bringing in the foreign actors was a major challenge. Getting Arsini in to Toronto was another challenge. Uh, we had to go through a lot of legal work to get them in. Uh, uh, we had to do a labor market impact assessment to show the Canadian government that it was okay to bring in the wonderful Arsini. Mm. And then we also had to bring in Anthony Tassan, Jesu Tassan, who, who resides in Paris. He is from, uh, his origin is from Sri Lanka, but he resides in Paris. So bringing these two people in was a major challenge. 
And then, of course, four days before we started filming, Anthony Dasan G. Sudasan fell ill. And that was a major scare. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, he recovered and he was on the, on the set uh, when we started filming. So there you go. Uh, I would say, ask Amrita, you know, he's Punjabi. Does his, your Punjabi background <coughs> help you in, uh, in, uh -oh. in portraying this? Uh, uh, do you know? Uh, excuse me. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah. I just have to put in a word sorry, here. Yeah. His name is Amrit. Amrit. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. not Amrita. Yeah. Amrit, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't think being Punjabi helped that much. I think it was more understanding the Indian culture in general. So, so I mean, may, so maybe, yeah, like... Having having a foundational knowledge of Indian culture did help, but not so much in playing a transgender. Though, okay. I think what was new for me playing Ruba was uh, the classical dance that I had to learn, um, understanding the sisterhood amongst her her sisters that she that she formed during the film, uh, but not so much not so much being Indian or uh, stuff like that didn't didn't really impact uh, my my yeah. portrayal in Ruba. Any other any other questions from the audience from the press? from film lovers. So I would like to close this session. I would like to thank this galaxy of directors, uh, Rodrigo, Matthew Brown, Lenin Shivam, cast uh, Amrit, <laughs> and then uh, uh, the director of photography, uh, Arsene Gusev, producer Warren Chinathambi, and executive producer Raji Nair. Thank you very much. Uh, we would like to have a group photograph.